All right, you guys, we are going to finish our dynamic list app at home. It looks like this. It is called dynamic list. Where are you going to find this? If you already haven't loaded it in MIT app inventor. Hey, the answer to that question is in week 15 of our Google classroom. It's right here. Dynamic list AIA. You'll download it. And then you will upload it into MIT App Inventor. Notice there are four arrangements here. There is a horizontal arrangement for uh, the user to enter their name. That is a label and a text box. And their favorite, in my case, ice cream. Uh, does it have to be ice cream? Of course not. You can change this to anything that you want and then a text box. And then there is a button to enter the data. And there is a button to show the results. And then right here is a list viewer. You can see the list view component over on the left. And this is what will show the different items that have been entered onto the list. And then notice down here at the bottom, a notifier component. This is so the user can get a confirmation that their data has been entered. Now, let's take a look at the code. So I know that uh, if you were in class on Tuesday or Friday last week, you've got some of this code done. Uh, if you were absent, you don't have any of it done. So I'm going to give you some hints from the beginning. If you've already done this part, uh, you can spin this video ahead or you can just put up with my voice for another couple of minutes. We always start a list with a variable. In this case, you have three variables. Now you're saying, but mister, we're just making a dynamic list. Actually, we are creating three separate lists. We are creating a list for the name. We are creating a list for the favorite ice cream. And we are creating a list to display both the name and the ice cream. So we're going to need three variables. So we are going to, in one case, I'm going to call it name list. In another case, ice cream list. In the third case, display list. Now, I need to set these to a value. Since we are making lists, I'm not going to set it to zero like I would a score. I'm going to go into lists and I'm going to grab a create empty list. And then I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times. And now I have three empty lists as places for my, uh, my data to go. Here's a question. What is the user going to do to put the information into these lists? What are the actions that are going to happen? And how are those actions going to happen with the user? Pause for a moment and then go ahead to see if you're correct. There are two different actions that are gonna be initiated by the user. One will be to press the enter data button. That's going to submit the data to the list from what the user has put in the text boxes. The second thing that's going to happen is the user is going to show the results of this entry. This will show the user what are the entries that have been put on the list? So we need to go over and get the event handlers for those buttons. The enter button. And the display button. Let's start with the code for the entry button. What is it that is going to happen? We need to add items to the list. 
Where would you find a code block that would put items in a list? Right here in the list drawer. Add items to a list and you'll notice it is asking for the list and it is asking for what is the item. We have two uh, items to add, both the name and the favorite flavor of ice cream. I'm going to duplicate this block. And I'm going to put it in the entry button. Now, we need to add those items. We need to identify the list. Well, one of them is the name list. And if I mouse over, I can grab the global name list. And the other one is the ice cream list. So I'm getting items from two different lists, the name and the ice, the favorite flavor of ice cream list. Now, what are the items that I am getting? Well, I'm getting the text from those text boxes. So now I want to go to the name box. What is it that I want to grab out of here? Now I've got a button that will put both of these items in the list. Now, once I've pressed that enter button, I don't want these um, items to remain. I want it to be blank for the next user or for the next entry. So what I want to do is I want to set the text in each of those to a blank box. How am I going to do that? Pause the video now, see if you can figure it out, and then come back and see. Hey, if you guessed set the name box and ice cream box text to blocks, you were correct. And we're going to set them to just a blank text box. Now there's one more thing that we want to do. We put in that notifier. That is going to send a message to the user that their data has been successfully entered. So we want to show an alert. When we call the notifier, it is just going to show an alert message and that message is just going to be entered with another text box. And here's where you put in any message that you want the user to see. You could just put your data was successfully entered. Uh, I'm just going to put your ice cream data was entered! Exclamation point. All right, that is the code for your enter button. Now, we're going to take a break here and the next video is going to show the code for your display button.